I'm, I'm definitely going to miss this old school. I'm going to hate having to get used to another new school. But, you know, it's definitely going to be a good improvement. Uh, I think it would be a waste just to smash it down. The mall shit all. Like, I'll never be able to uh, walk into the new school and say that this is my high school. When I'm in college and I come back to the high school, I'm definitely going to miss the old high school. Yeah, I'm going to miss the school. Mostly for nostalgia's sake. Yeah, I will. Only because I, I'm going to miss the school because it, it's my alma mater. A little. Definitely a little. Because uh, everything feels like home right now. I've been in here for half a year, so everything's familiar. I know everything, but in the new school, Completely new thing. It'd be like a zoo in there. I say for nostalgia's sake, I'll probably miss parts of the old school. It's been around for so many decades, and many of our parents went to this school. I always say to myself, I'm not gonna miss this building when it gets torn down. I'm not gonna miss it. But I honestly am gonna miss it. I think I'm gonna miss high school, but I don't think I'm gonna miss this school. No, I'm not going to miss the old school at, at all. No, I'm not going to miss this old school. Yeah, you'll miss it, and you know. Old, old memories, but like everything else, everything moves on. When I first got here, I was like, "Whoa, this is a, this is a new place." Uh, my first impression was, "Wow, this is terrifying." It's terrifying. When I first got here, it was scary being a freshman and like coming into school and not having as much hand holding as you did in middle school. Scary. I don't know. Because there's a lot of upperclassmen, you're just like a small little freshman. They'll crush you and you know it. My first impression holy crap, I'm going to get trampled. I was very concerned about the senior culture of the high school coming in as a freshman because I had media tends to portray that relationship as kind of that the seniors are bullies and do all these horrible things to freshmen. It really wasn't like that. It, w it really wasn't so bad. Uh, I didn't like it very much. I thought the middle school was a lot better. Everything seemed ritzier than in the middle school. The middle school was very limiting. The policies of the middle school were very limiting because you had to have proper behavior as a younger kid. My impressions of the school building and of the people were really positive. I remember it was a young staff, an energetic staff, that was um, putting in a lot of effort and time for the students here. My first impression of the school, what I can remember is getting lost a lot. I remember, um, which one's D-Wing, which one's B-Wing, B-Wing goes this way and that way. <laughs> Why is D-Wing in the middle of A-Wing and B-Wing? That confused me for probably a week. Sea wing's so big, I thought it was two act, two separate wings. I feel like everybody thought they were going to get lost, and then three seconds in, you knew where everything was, because it is really small. I got lost a lot, but I don't know how. I mean, I was just talking about how simple the school's layout is. My first day in middle school, I remember getting lost on the first day, but my first day of high school went a lot smoother than that. I didn't get lost, surprisingly, uh, thanks to freshman orientation <laughs> and maps. I remember having to use a map for like two months, but that was just me. I had no idea what the school was going to be like, so I was relying on the signs everywhere. I felt kind of lost most of the time. I, don't know, I found it easier to navigate just because you had that one main hallway where, you know, you know if it's a C wing, it's a D wing, it's the B wing, you know where it's going. Just the size of it, you know, I didn't know much about North Reading before I came here. I'm from the city and uh, everything was big and loud and, um, and hectic and here it's a little slower. My first impressions with the high school was I had never seen so much glass in my whole life. This school was all glass at one time. It was a, it was a state of the art high school. The remnants is our gymnasium, which is a glass dome, so to speak. But coming from uh, the city, Lynn, and you know, all of your high schools are three stories, four stories, two stories, whatever, all of your buildings. And then coming into a school building that was all on one level and all glass, it was like, wow. Coming into this new school, I was just like dumbfounded by how big it seemed to me at the time. It was small because I came from a school of thousands and down to a school of only hundreds was quite a, quite a difference. 
I knew I thought it was a little small. It didn't look a lot bigger than the middle school, but once I got inside it, I realized it was a lot bigger. You know, it, it was clean and well maintained, but I kind of remember thinking, we're going to outgrow this place pretty fast. Uh, the size of the school, I think, is perfect. You know, it's not a large school, it's not a tiny school. It's, I think it's a place that just big enough and, and staffed enough that we get an awful lot accomplished and with a personal touch and not just becoming a number. But I remember like feeling like, wow, the, the kids were really friendly, the faculty, the administration was all really friendly, so even as a new person, I think I felt comfortable here within days. The first week I was here as a freshman, um, there was a uh, girl fight in the main ramp. Uh, two, two young ladies decided to have a fight. Um, I believe it was over a, uh, a, a gentleman student here at the school. I'll keep it uh, clean. And um, it was, uh, that was an eye opener. Um, and uh, to be perfectly honest, I, as a freshman, said this is a pretty cool place. And uh, we had a few fundraisers when I first started, which I thought were hilarious. We had something called cow chip poker. And they'd line the little football field with little squares. And then I think you can take it from there, if you know what a cow chip is. When I first got here, I was really confused as to why when I walked into the, into the door, people were loitering in the hallway. Because I assumed that when, from experience of middle school, when you first go to a, when you first get into school, you go to your homeroom or your first period of class. So why were, was everyone sitting there and I was just, do I go to my class? I think I ended up going to my first period of class instead of going in the hallway for fear of getting in trouble on my first day of school. My favorite part is the sea wing because that's where all the science stuff and actually at the same time it has the math in. I did not like math very much but I always had fond memories of science class. I feel my favorite part of the high school is the interaction with all different grades because in the middle school, really, it was just uh, segregated. My favorite part of the school is probably the auditorium because it's where I spend most of my time. I'm in masters, so I basically live there. My favorite part of the school is the cafeteria because you get food there. So uh, my favorite part of the school is basically just how simple the layout is. Because, you know, it's basically just one big hallway with all the wings coming off of it, so it's really simple. I gotta say, I love the auditorium, spent a lot of time in it. Honestly, I'd have to say the track, because that's the most recent. Um, I do most of my activities there. I run a lot, I do track, cross country. My favorite part of the school is how nice the teachers are. They really make learning fun and interesting and they keep the students engaged. I'd say my favorite part of the school would have to be the lobby because it's kind of where all the areas come together and mash and it's where people from all different parts of the school come together to go from point A to point B. I think my favorite part of the school is the environment and I know that's kind of um, not something typically put with a high school but I find here, or maybe it's um, my grade in particular, we all get along. I get along well also with the teachers. The, it's a very um, give and take kind of situation with the teachers where they treat you as um, individuals with a respect that you didn't get before. My favorite part of the school is definitely how there are a lot of opportunities. You can be on both the science team and the track team and find you know, a different group of people um, in both atmospheres, both environments. My favorite part of the actual building is the courtyard and the hallways around it because since the courtyard is um, adjacent to the three hallways and there's just glass instead of a wall so you can see into the courtyard and you can see through to the other sides of the hallway so it, it gives that main lobby a real open feel. My favorite part of the school is probably the close-knit communities that are formed in North Reading because we all pretty much know each other. My favorite thing is probably um, the fact that the school um, I think has a, has a certain amount of warmth to it. You know, it's, it's not a large building um, and I think that it has, uh, it has afforded us to be able to do um, some really good work because there is a certain warmth and closeness, if you will, the, the way in which the building has been designed. My favorite part of the school is probably 
when you're over near the gym and you look at the walls and you see a lot of the pictures of the old athletes um, from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s through now. My favorite part of the school, uh, personally, as a career, I, I, I like the people I work with. Uh, you know, I've had many jobs and I think most people will tell you there's certain people you like or don't dislike uh, in any of the jobs they've had. And I think generally speaking, this is the best staff I've worked with across all my jobs going back to you know, working fast food restaurants as a teenager like a lot of the students do now. And what I like about the building is um, oh, that it has some uh, history to it. You know, it's been here almost 60 years. I spend a lot of time in this building. So I think I like the building. It's just a period. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a home place for me. I'm Wayne Hardacre, Supervisor of Builders and Grounds for the North Bay Public Schools. Responsible for five schools, the grounds and maintenance of, all, of our five schools with 2,600 kids and 300 to 400 staff and everybody that comes in from out of our schools on a daily basis. Hey, Jay, what's up, Wayne? How goes it? What's that? On the floor. Yeah? Boy. All right. Enjoy. I'm going to. Yeah, this, this school was built in 1955. Um, the chairman of the building committee was the first graduate here, Chuck Harucci. He was the first, he was in the first class of graduate here. I came here when the building first opened in 1957. There was only three sports at that time in 57. Football, uh, basketball, baseball. That was it at that time for North Bernie High School. When the school first opened up in 57, the classes ranged from the fifth grade to the 12th grade, all right? So they were, it was crowded, but the classes were small at that time. You know, the average class, uh, each class was probably, like our class was 86 kids. So they were all small classes. Coming from the bachelor school, it was like coming to a castle, you know? It really was. If you, I don't know if you went to the bachelor school or not. Before they remodeled it, well, it looked about the same back then. So it was, it was quite an improvement coming to a new high school at that time. When, when I first started teaching here, it was really uh, pretty much old school education, reading, writing, and arithmetic, you know. I mean, we have art teachers here, graphic art teachers, technology now, but in the old days, you know, we had wood shop, and we had automotive shop, and, you know, all of those subjects and, and um, disciplines I think helped to develop the total student. This side was, well it was art, but it was also down here was the um, machine shops. One of my favorite things about this school has always been the art room that's in the old auto shop. Uh, it's always been, uh, my daughter took art classes all four years and I always loved going to that room on parents night and seeing the garage doors and wondering why in the world are kids taking part in an old garage. When I had baseball practice out on that field, in gym class out on that field, occasionally we had to stop because there were horses grazing in the outfield and people would come riding by on horseback to go out on our track, which was cinders, and they'd gallop the horse around the track. So that was a little unusual. I didn't see that in Lynn. You know, we didn't see much of that, so. School lunches were great because all the food was cooked in um, the kitchen. Nothing was pre-prepared. Um. Their food was very good. I mean, we get along with the personnel very well uh, at that time. Lockers were a little bit smaller back then. Uh, they were used the same as they are today for the kids. They were lockers. Oh, well, we used our lockers. We always used our lockers. But we didn't have backpacks, so we had to carry our books in our arms. You left in your locker what you couldn't carry. The traffic in the parking lot was not even close to what it is now because I mean, back then, I graduated in 1970. Lucky enough to have a car, you probably, in some cases, guys built them themselves. But the traffic in the halls, it was crowded. 
Uh, the corridors, uh, what you see out there, the ramps in those corridors, they were steps at one time. All right. These were stairs. They put in the ramps um, because they had to comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act. And the library was right there. It was in BWI. You know, being that I've lived in town all my life, went to school here, I graduated from here, I went to college. My daughter graduated from here. Well, I'm still in town. Raised my children in town. My grandchildren are being raised in town. I think the emphasis here in the school and the, the, the style of teaching seems to have changed. They've gone away from the rote memory type education to you know, letting the students kind of explore and expand. And of course, technology is a big part of that. Structurally, there hasn't been too much change to this, this school building. We did undergo a renovation in 1988. In fact, this school was renovated about 20 years ago, a little more than 20 years ago. But it was a minor renovation. It mainly um, consisted of a new library and really putting up walls to make some of our existing classrooms smaller because we needed more classrooms because of our enrollment. I was here almost immediately after the renovation was finished. Uh, the renovation was finished in 1991. Um, my first, I was fall of 92, we came in the building. So we had a pretty sparkling new building. The library was basically two years old. That would have been the biggest part of the, the renovation. Um, the ramps that run up the main hallway, those were all stairs uh, before that. So, um, it, you know, th those are, you know, some changes that existed a little bit before I got here. I've been here since 1999. In 1989 is when the school was renovated partially. The boilers were replaced in 89. The steam recovery system was replaced in 89. Most of the piping within the school is still original, which, go, which is steam piping, which runs probably almost two miles. If go every classroom and returns and everywhere there's heat is, is steam piping. This, this used to be the outside wall here, it's just uh, back in, I think it was, uh, I think what year it was. We added, I remember it might have been 03, and these modules were added, and we added the ones in D-Wing were added. The thing that I remember the most though, even before I was in school here, was the gym, because you'd come in for, you know, you know, we came in for CCD classes, I think, before the renovation, um, you know, and that's a long time ago, but uh, we came in for youth basketball, and that gym was a lot different than it is now. It's the same space. But it was darker, it was, you know, dirtier than it is now. So that gym's a little different. There is one place, I, I'm, I'm going to miss the gym. Um, I spent uh, a fair bit of time in that gym. Uh, I have a lot of great memories as a basketball player myself here. I have a lot of great memories from, um, I was going to say gym class, but Mrs. Crocker, if she was watching, excuse me, Mrs. Brown, if she was watching this would kill me. So physical education class, Miss Brown. Um, I have great memories from that, um, and I think you know the gym is probably the place that I'm, I'm going to miss the most. So. Again, it's kind of compact. When you get a full house in there, there's a real, you know, real sense of energy that I think is uh, is a lot of fun and, and says a lot about us as a school spirit in terms of our school spirit. As I travel to other schools and see uh, their gymnasiums, I often think to myself, I like our gym better. It's uh, it's there's something special about that place, and I don't know if it's more just about its appearance as much as it is about all that's gone on in there. The thing is, it, it seems modern, but the windows aren't. I mean, I, I look around and I, I think for the time that it was actually planned, it, it's, it's rather fantastic. About three years ago, we had the gym floor refinished. And uh, you have to do that about every three or four years because it gets worn out. Uh, when the co contractor came in to, uh, fix, to, to redo the floor, they told us, this is the last time you can do it. You've got about a sixteenth of an inch of wood left on the gym floor. And uh, we got a pretty good laugh at that at the school committee because uh, we realized how many times we had gone in and sanded, refinished, sanded, refinished. We got like a bunch of kids in the school and there's way too many fins at Tiny Cafeteria of ours. So they divide us up into three groups. Uh, we have first power block, second power block, third power block. And uh, whichever power block you don't have, that's your lunch period. So if I have first and third power block, I have second lunch. But you can go to the library and you can decide what lunch you want to go to from there. 
We have three lunches, first, second, and third. So if you want to go to the library, you eat first lunch. And if your power block has second or third lunch, you go to that lunch. I've never really liked the cafeteria. It's um, just kind of a, a blah space, you know? It's just, it's just a big rectangular room. And... After lunch, it is like, you find food spewed across the room. I mean, they don't have time to clean up, so it's like, you'll find maybe like, the leftover pizza on the ground, or the uh, food on the tables, and it'd be like wet and all that stuff. In the Mod Cafe, it's better. You know, you don't have as many people, but I mean, it's still, you know, the cafeteria's cafeteria. Also, in our teacher's cafeteria, we don't have any windows, and so to eat lunch with some natural light, some sunlight, things like that would be nice. So, I really like school lunches. There are some people who say they don't like school lunches. I don't know, I don't know what they're talking about. I'm not sure which school lunch they're eating. <laughs> The school lunches are amazing here. I don't really like the school lunches. School lunches are not as bad as everyone says. I'm a big fan of them. In all honesty, school lunches are abysmal. They're sometimes good, but usually they're pretty gross. They're good? Ever since Michelle Obama got at them, they haven't been that much. There hasn't been a lot. And, and Michelle Obama has, it is her, um, plan that has been put into place to make things more healthy. The more we put it out, like those fresh vegetables and all that, the more that you see it, it seems, well, let me give it a try. They got rid of the fries and I was kind of disappointed about that, but now that the fruit's free, I mean, I'm grabbing five to six oranges a day and they're getting ticked at me. They're very unique. Uh, they offer a wide variety of choices. So I usually vary. I mean, they have pizza, cheeseburgers, chicken patties. You can make your own sandwich and you can get the daily changer. I like the salad. The salad and the school and cheese are pretty it's intense. But pretty, I mean, I think freshman year was good. Sophomore year was okay. And junior year, it's, it's been pretty bad. When I was here freshman year, it was, you know, you had the chocolate chip cookies where, you know, and then they started going healthy and that's where it started going south. And the cookies, I hate that they, now there's only two and they're like, they're the size of barely bigger than a quarter, I guess. Oh, last year, they were so good. I miss those cookies so much, I don't know why we don't have them anymore. I mean, the cookies this year are barely selling. I would buy either buy pizza, the pizza's not that, but the pizza is pretty good. And when I was a freshman through, I believe, junior year, they would have this thing called Calzone Thursday. They would have, like, every Thursday, they would have calzones. Either steak and cheese, chicken buff, and just chicken parm and stuff like that. And they were, like, the favorite time of the week. They were, like, I would always forget the period before, and then someone would be like, oh, it's calzone Thursday. I'd be like, what? Yes, it's calzone Thursday. Calzone Thursday is always a huge thing in North Reading High School, something I'll always remember. Calzone Thursdays, I miss those. Those were fun. It was fun, I guess. It was something to look forward to, but even then, the calzones weren't even that good. It was just something, the idea of it was actually better than the actual calzone. I've done wrestling for four years. It's a little tough as a freshman just because you have no idea what you're going for. You have two weeks called Hell Week, which is basically the first two weeks of practice where it's all conditioning. And you, you just want to die in those two weeks. Um, then after that, it gets easier. The season goes by wicked fast. Like practice wise, you're, bit, you're like, oh, I just want to get out of here. But like after that, you just like it, this one by way too fast. I have to say my favorite high school memory would have to be. Probably during the volleyball trials, because that's when I made my first couple friends in the high school and it was just really great and we all just kind of clicked. The coaching staff here brings a very serious air to track and in a lot of schools I think it's taken not as serious and I'm very proud of the fact that students take it serious. You know, We have over 110 kids this year and the program is the best it's probably ever been in most cases. And just because of the addition of the new facility, that really triggered that growth. The facility is great. I mean, having that facility is, has helped us perform at high levels because if you compare it to what used to be there, um, you know, in terms of field events, for instance, you couldn't keep things outside. You know, I remember when I was 
an athlete, the high jump mats and the pole vault mats had to be put away every day and taken out every day. And you couldn't long jump or triple jump if it was wet even three days prior to because the sand pit was a pond. <laughs> and then we have the ability to watch um, all our friends compete in maybe a totally different event that we do. Like, some people, like everybody can find their own niche and track. You don't have to do just one sport. It's a combination of like, a bunch of different sports. And I do football, but it's a pretty big thing. My favorite high school memory um, has to be about football, my junior year. Um, we played Thanksgiving, uh, the Thanksgiving football game on the turf against uh, Midfield, and we won. I didn't realize how much our town was involved in uh, high school, like a lot of football games, like especially Thanksgiving, it's packed. We, uh, we have trouble getting onto the field from a football player's standpoint of view. All the radiators are really loud and obnoxious. All the teachers joke about how there's a monster in the radiators. Yeah. You just, it sounds like somebody's trying to break out of them. Like somebody's stuck in there, they're like banging the walls. It's yeah. horrible. My then. English teacher, she always jokes about the heat. She always says, oh yeah, I don't mind you. Who wants to compete with the heat? I like whenever we want to read. Miss Solomon's class, whenever we're taking a test, the heat is just like, oh, let me be like. <laughs> Let me just yell at you so you can't take your test. <laughs> you know how you can go from one classroom to another and there's about a 30 degree temperature change? That can ruin your day. What a silly design for New England. <laughs> We're pumping heat from way down there, way up to the end of Sea Wing. Um, but it was a simple design and it served its time 50, oh geez, 56 years now. I like it that there is no second, third, or basement floors, it's all one level, so that makes it a little easier when you don't have to tackle stairs every day, especially when you're running around. My least favorite part of the school is how it's on an incline and you have to like, power walk up to get to Sea Wing. <laughs> I liked that we had a ramp, like I liked that it was all one story, but I understand that's why it was always crowded. Because we only use that one hallway to get in and out of classes, it's, I mean I can't get to my class from D Wing all the way to Sea Wing on time. Yeah, the hallways are really crowded. Um, it's really slow, and I don't know why, because people just decided to walk faster than like things would generally go pretty smoothly. My least favorite part of the school would probably be the bathrooms. We have a staff of 70 or so, half of which I suppose are women, and we have two bathroom stalls. And so like before lunch, during power block, beginning of the day, end of the day, it tends to get a little crowded. I feel like all the bathrooms at the school, except for Sea Wing, are just kind of cramped and gross. And then I want to flush. I don't like when my, my urinals don't flush. I tried to flush it once and it overflowed. Uh, I miss the, definitely miss the um, auditorium because that's where I spend most of my time. That's where most of my memories are based. The drama performances have been pretty special here for a number of years, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of history. There's a lot of legacy in our um, in our auditorium. And there's there's some memories that will be left behind, and those are two that strike me right now. It's like a home. It's like a giant um, box where nothing else exists outside of it. And everything that's creative and supportive and imaginative happens inside. One of my favorite, favorite things in this building, and that's our lovely auditorium, because I don't think you can find one chair in the auditorium that doesn't have something wrong with it. You can sit in one chair, and there's no wooden arm in your, you have to rest your arm on like metal that has things sticking up and poking into your skin. You can sit on another chair. And these are actually great because you can sit on another chair and the good thing is you can take your cushion with you. So you can sit in the chair, then it's intermission, you want to go sit somewhere else, you don't have to sit on the floor. You can just take your cushion and bring it with you wherever you're going in the school. Um, that's very helpful. Um, the, the size of the stage, the lights, the sound system, I'd say just about everything is inadequate in that auditorium. It's another a clear 
indicator of why we need um, we need a new school. All right, so this is the auditorium, and next we're going to go and we're going to take a look at the catwalk, which is where they keep the lights, keep the paint, and a lot of other props to the shows. So uh, this is where we keep the lights in a very organized fashion. One of my favorite things about the whole place is the graffiti. The, <laughs> that's mine, actually. But um, just everyone throughout years and years and years has left their uh, little signatures up here and like what shows they did. And I think the earliest one I ever found was 1969, so that was really cool. Most of the catwalks in new schools, they don't just have this one narrow like walkway. They have the entire like upper areas and attic, and it's usually for storage. But we also use the, um, the pit downstairs for storage. This is where they keep the set pieces in the pit. And um, it's just, it's got a lot of history down here because much like the catwalk, it has a lot of uh, graffiti and everything everywhere. This is our wood pile, you probably guessed. Yeah, so we use this wood to build our own sets because all the sets and the shows were everything um, are built by students. Over there, that little gaping hole in the wall, we refer to that as the Jordan Arnia. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of written above there in like charcoal. If you climb through there, you're in the foundation of the school, and um, if you like go around, the batting cages for the baseball team are just on the other side of this wall. Sometimes when you're down here, you can hear them practicing. And then over here is the costume closet. And the costume closet, oh my god, they've emptied it out repeatedly, but I still thousands of costumes in there, and I don't know how they fit them all in there. And there's two ways to get in. There's this really awesome ladder that rattles when you climb down it, and you have a final destination moment every time you look down from up there. And um, every time they open the doors, you have to yell, pit door open, and everyone has to yell back, pit door open, because that way they know that it is, in fact, open, and you're not going to fall through a hole in the stage. And it's a really good safety precaution. The heart of the school. Without the water room, we don't function. Watch your step here. Many years ago, they burned oil. Number, remember, they burned number four oil. It used to come in, there was pumps in the ground uh, on, that, on the east side of the building. And I'm told by a gentleman who used to work here that one year was they flooded, there was three feet of oil in there. They had a real problem. That was a real mess. I'll give you a little history on this. Is uh, 1974, I uh, came down here. And it was, you know, it was a maintenance room with all kinds of flood. It actually wasn't nearly as organized or as kept up as this. It was just piles of desks, just all school junk that accumulated. It was just junk down here. And there was a little door. It was, uh, and the door was about from here to about here. I opened it, climbed in, and saw. That's about what I saw. Uh, and there was a couple of light bulbs. A couple of light bulbs. There was the light bulb over there, not the fluorescent lamps like there are now, but there was just a few light bulbs. And I said, geez, this is, uh, maybe I can do something with baseball down here. And eventually, I come up with the idea of putting this little cage in here. And the cage is very, very uh, <laughs> rustic, or whatever you want to call it. Well, that's all I had for lighting. I had about five light bulbs, and I had a spotlight right here. And the, you could barely see, and you just hoped that no one hit the ball out, because you probably would have gotten killed. This was the only place that a baseball player could work out at indoors. It was the only place. So consequently, the Red Sox used to come here. We had in the late 70s a uh, number of Red Sox players that would come down here with Walter Miniak, who was the pit hitting coach of the Red Sox then. And they would literally, you gotta visualize that cage reversed with a little hole in the back. They would throw the ball into the hole and the guys would hit. And like I said, we hoped that they didn't hit the ball up 
And they did, and the ball would ricochet all around, and you could see all the lights eventually up there got bro broken. We had no carpeting, it was all dirt. I mean, real fine, thin uh, dirt, so that when we get through, it was a maze of dust. Couldn't see, from that end to here, you couldn't see people down the very end. There was so much dust in the accumulating. You know, eventually I came up with the idea of getting carpeting, and I mean, I had people all throughout town donating. They'd call me, coach, I got carpeting, we're gonna dump it out, so I'd go pick it up. So we put carpeting down, and um, starting, this started about 76 or so, I came up with this. This was really the start of indoor batting facilities. Um, I forget what World Series, but the two opposing pitches, one was for Kansas City, the other was for the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. They both worked out and they both pitched off this mound. And here they were uh, competing against each other in the, in the uh, World Series. Um, this facility has developed quite a reputation, uh, not just locally, but there are coaches and, and people that know about this, you know, out of the area, out of the state actually. Because as I said, it's the first of a kind. 20 years ago, people would come down that stairwell, come into this batting facility, and it was like, wow, this is great. Now with the advent of all these indoor hitting facilities, they come down that stairwell and they look around and they see the cobwebs and they see the dirt on the floor and they see, you know, some of the other miscellaneous stuff that we have laying around and they look and they go, oh man, this place is the pits. But what they don't understand is, and I tell the parents, it works. We had a sign down here, maybe it's at the top of the stairwell, it says bomb shelter. This was actually the bomb shelter for the town of North Reading, that cement cubicle right there, which would have housed about 100 people, <laughs> was uh, the bomb shelter. Now remember, this school was built in 1958. And in 1958, you know, in that particular time, we were going through the thing called the Cold War with the Russians, and we were under the impression that we were gonna get bombed at any time. Despite the facility like this, what you have to have are the players that are committed to use it. You know, if you don't have players that are committed to use this, it's, it's, it has no value, it's, it's worthless. So fortunately here at North Reading, we've, all our, our players have uh, you know, appreciated the facility and uh, we've got the kids that want to use it. So. This is all, this whole 110,000 square foot site in 2015 or thereabouts is going to be demolished. That's a, that's, a, that's a tall order. And all of the areas underneath will be all filled in. It'll be all graded over. Um, what will be happen to it after that? Possibly parking. It's not fully determined at this point. Po possibly parking in, in some sports areas, but um, it's not it's not finalized as far as the process. So. And one thing I always like to tell everybody, we have big we have four items we accomplish on a daily basis. Clean, safe, warm, and dry. Mr. Bernard, he knows them by heart. Cleaning is cleaning is what it says. We want to keep these places clean. We, uh, we, we have to keep them clean. The bathrooms, we have employees that do it. My job is to supply the products, the training. There's a machine right there we bought. See that scrubber right there? That helps us do the cleaning around here. The other portion of that is, the next one is safe. The next one is safe. Um, we have, we added uh, a video camera system. We have added door fobs, controller. All this, many staff have controllers to get in the building. If you guys come in the morning, the front door is open. That's probably the only door that may be open. Maybe the gym may be open. Other than that, when everybody's in and safe, everything is locked down. The safety concern, which we have at every school, is asbestos. Every school built before probably 1978 has asbestos. The third part, the warm part, is how do we keep the place warm? And down in the basement, there's a two gigantic boilers. The steam boilers, they're old technology, because this school was originally steam. It was renovated in 1989, but the steam system remained. 
and it's probably two miles of pipe. And that's another reason there's oak crawl space underneath here. It's all the steam piping. So the, and the fourth one is the dry portion, the clean, safe, warm, and dry. The dry is to make sure that you know, the roof's not leaking. We do it every day. Every day there's somebody in the school, and every day there's nobody in the school. All summer we want to do the same thing. So when you guys come back in the fall, that the floors are shiny, the place is painted, it's well maintained, it looks good, it smells good, and we're ready for school. This pipe actually broke uh, several years ago. It was a huge flood. Uh, we had to shut the water down in the street. Uh, the Department of Public Works came over and dug it all up for us, repaired the pipe. Uh, we missed, I think we missed one day of school because we did, couldn't get it back on in time. But this supplies uh, high pressure water, 120 PSI, to the sprinkler system which is only part of the school, which is the old automotive part of it, and the rest of it goes into the school uh, for all the water needs that we have. When I was a kid, you know, I just went to school, and you really don't think much about the, how, how, does, how does everything happen? I mean, most people, they just come in and like, I, I like probably like any student, you go home after school or something, you have a snack, you know, uh, the lights are on, or, or it's warm, or it's cool, or it's, how does it get like that? Most people don't need to know, they don't care, but I like to think what, we do behind the scenes, and we do make a difference. Um, we don't necessarily need recognition for that. That's our job. The traffic is horrible coming into the school and into the parking lot. And I call the parking lot the field of thunderous metal. Getting into school is kind of tough because you got um, the the road's coming in, everybody's lining up. Sometimes it takes like eight minutes just to get down a little 50 yard stretch of a street. On the way to get to school, it's a train wreck. If you go up Haverhill Street, going down that hill, you can be sitting there for a good 10 minutes. You're like, you can, leave, you, you can get there at like 7.20. You'd be like, oh, I'm all set. You'll be waiting there another five minutes and you could be late for class. And you just be like, come on, I was there so early. I don't think students know how to drive in the parking lots yet. They don't understand that parking lots also have rules. The road traffic isn't, it's not that bad. Getting into school is fine, although I get here like around 7, 10-ish. Getting over those speed bumps, so you never know if someone's going to go uh, 2 miles an hour or 200 miles an hour. Depends on the person and if you can get to the end of the driveway, the traffic director, the crossing guard, you never know if she's going to let you out, so it's always, always a wild card. So a big problem with student traffic in the student parking lot is um, a lot of people will just be walking around while people are trying to drive away, and they'll just be standing in the middle of like the parking lot where the cars are supposed to be leaving from, and that doesn't help out the situation. You try and get out, no one's going to wait for you, except for like two people, but that only happens like once in a lifetime. And then hallway traffic is even worse. Well, there's a lot of hallway traffic. Mm. Um, traffic in the hallways, it's, it's really busy. Uh, the hall traffic's definitely worse than the road traffic. In the hallways, it's annoying, um, particularly towards the beginning of the year. Sophomores, the juniors, and the seniors know you're going down the hall, you walk on your right-hand side, and the freshmen have no idea where their classes are, so they're weaving back and forth across the hallway trying to find their classrooms. Hall oh, traffic is the worst. I don't understand why they didn't build a like, little modular hallway. The hallways are crowded. This school was built for like less people than are actually in the school now. So especially the intersection in B-Wing. Probably the intersection between B-Wing and the main hallway. B-Wing and the ramp. The B-Wing intersection. The B-Wing intersection. Uh, B-Wing. 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 It's treacherous. D-Wing. Absolutely. When D-Wing's coming out and turning, and then there's A-Wing, and then there's like B and C-Wing going down to A-Wing. There's so many people, and people are trying to go straight, and people are trying to go inside B-Wing, people are trying to leave B-Wing. We're on the track team, and we're still late for class. <laughs> In the hallways, it's bad but tolerable. You can get to your class on time. People who say otherwise are lying. I, I just gave up on it in sophomore year and I just decided to plow through everybody. <laughs> That's kind of what makes the school North Reading High School. It's just everybody jammed into one spot. High school lockers. We never use them. No one uses them. We just carry around our uh, backpacks with us. No one uses lockers or anything. 
I have never used a locker. I have never seen somebody else use a locker. Um, no one even uses them. Nobody uses the lockers really except band kids. I don't even use my locker. No one really uses the lockers. 1% of the entire high school uses their locker. Lockers? No, I, I, I would... Like, I, you see a locker at the beginning, but other than that, you don't ever go to it. Or I don't. Do you? Nah, I've never gone I think like 90% of kids don't. You just don't have time in between classes. I mean, when you, can't, when you get to carry your backpack around all day, it's fine. But, I mean... There's no I, need. Yeah, there's no need, really. You get to take your stuff home. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're gonna go and even think about going to your locker, then you miss your bus automatically, you miss your ride. So, I mean, they could either try to do something about that or just leave it the way it is. I do know my actual locker number by heart. No, my locker is somewhere in the sea wing. No idea where it is, no idea what the combination is. I know that my locker is somewhere in sea wing, and that is it. <laughs> yeah, same. I know the wing it's in, but I have no idea which one it is. Uh, no, I've opened my locker and closed it probably five times in my three years. Once at the beginning of each year, and then at the end of each year, I take it off. No, mine's, I have no idea. Mine's in sea wing. So yeah, my, mine's in sea wing. On the right. I actually, yes, right. my binder is in there, but it's been in there since the first half day we had because I did not want to carry it around. <laughs> I can't open my own locker. In fact, I have used the lockers here so little that I find myself forgetting exactly how the locks work. School network. I don't have words. Oh god. The computers are obscenely slow. The computers are slow and outdated. The school network is really antiquated, um, to say the least. School network dial up. Which one's better? I don't know. So the school network and internet is notorious for being slow. I think slow might be an understatement. God, the computers are horrible. There's just not enough bandwidth, I think, and if you don't get to the bandwidth quick enough and, like, steal your share of it, there's, like, not enough to go around, so... It's a school computer, so it's a lot of things are banned and stuff, so... But people find ways around it. You got little, uh, proxies and stuff like that that people would use and get to, like, play bubble box, play addicting games and stuff like that. Go on Facebook. Alright, so it was typing, it was about halfway through the typing year, and some student in my class was just typing on their computer, and then started smoking. And then the smoke just started to increase, and Miss Deesman was just like, what's happening? And then we turned the computer off, and we called another teacher, and they just took it away, and then we were one computer short. Um, the internet is the internet. I think the school computers are pretty good. I mean, I, we always have some problems, like, uh, I know they, the school tries to block out some pages and everything, so we can't use them. It's terribly slow, like, painfully slow. I just sit there. It took me an entire block just to sign out of another computer because a class showed up. I tried to go on time.com to look at pitches, and I got it up quicker on my phone than I did on my computer, and I'm like, oh, okay, like, and I had no service. The least favorite part of the school would have to be the locker rooms because everything keeps getting stolen there and there's it's just too small in general, especially if you're in sports. Bags are everywhere. My least favorite part of the school, I'm going to make a list and it's a fairly expansive one. The computer networks, um, waiting in line to get lunch, especially on days when there's a popular lunch. The ends of Sea Wing because they're kind of dark and no one really goes there so you kind of feel like you're in a city in an alley. Someone's sneaking up on you and trying to get you. The halls. Anytime when you're traveling in the halls and between classes is awful. I don't like how small the library is. That's always kind of bothered me, actually. The lack of sufficient technology. Yeah, probably the locker rooms. And probably the health classroom. The health classroom's a tad horrible. I don't like the gym, I don't know, it just smells weird. Trying to juggle doing a sport and doing all your homework. I feel like some of our classrooms are, are uh, too cramped, like there's not enough room in them. Then imagine the computer networks, because the computer networks. The, the
project started, probably the idea of it started probably about 15 or 20 years ago. The effort's been going on for a long time. We actually started in 2000 to try and do something for the schools. And we got as far as uh, 2004 and then a moratorium came on that they weren't funding school building projects. The um, state put a moratorium on funding any school building projects. Um, they were changing how the state um, program worked. So for two years, um, you really couldn't do anything. So we stopped. Then in 2005, the state started reimbursing schools. Um, there was a proposal five or six years ago um, in the 35 to 40 million dollar range to renovate both schools. In 2003, there was actually a vote to renovate the middle school and the high school separately, the current buildings. Um, that failed at the polls. And that vote failed. And I think after that, we finished the batch and then came back. True. Once we went through the process and had the plans, we did have to convince the state that a combined school, that was probably the biggest challenge, that a combined school was something that they would help to fund. So the entire project ended up costing about $125 million, and the state is going to pay for $50 million of it, convincing people to build the new school. That was a lot of work. And support came from all different kinds of people. So as Marcy said, people with kids, people without kids, people whose kids graduated a long time ago. Oh. The, the uh, steel is up at the new high school is pretty well complete. The frame is pretty much in place. Uh, so that was a big first phase. Um, so the high school building itself has all the structural steel in it. They're going to start to pour the floors and they'll begin working on the envelope and doing the inside work. The new, the new high school is going to be um, much more in line with the number of students that are there and the facilities will be much more modern and improved. And, and that's where we are today. It's, a, it's kind of a scary project because it's so big and it is really expensive. We're well on our way. You can see the construction up on the hill. Um, it's really cool now, the high school classroom building, the um, distance learning lab, which will have this kind of curved glass wall, um, is now taking shape. You can see the frame of it. Um, when, they, when the final third of the high school um, steel starts going up, you're going to see how big that building really is. And that's just the classroom building. We're, we're building four buildings, essentially. The classroom building, the auditorium, the gym, and then um, the, the cafeteria, media center, etc. Definitely the spirit. Uh, you got kids going to the basketball playoff games with their shirts off and like painted across the chests and um, especially during like the Star Spangled Banner and every time it pauses they just make some sound that makes everybody laugh. So Great student spirit at athletic events. Um, I, I attend a lot of um, events, still attend a lot of events at the school and I'm always amazed that there's always one at the basketball games, always a section filled up with kids. Um, dressed in costumes and names written on their bare chests and things like that. I, I just think that's awesome. The drive of a lot of students that they have here, yeah. My first year here teaching, uh, physics students wanted to, they wanted to start the AP course. I also am very proud of, um, of the record of accomplishment of our students. Uh, again, I'm going to, you know, just a short time, I'm going to be graduating my 10th class here and um, it, is a, it is a special day when we are out usually outdoors, uh, hopefully if the weather cooperates, uh, celebrating the graduation from high school. What, I, what I'm most proud of about North Reading High School is really the, the very positive community uh, and culture that exists in the school. I'd say I'm most proud of the way they advertise people's work and everything. I mean, you go down one wing, you got photography, you go down another wing, painting. No, I play a different way. You get into the businesses and French. You learn all about the languages. Then you come into like art room, and oh, behind me, there's like a bunch of uh, birdhouses. The birdhouses behind me. You see every, what everybody's accomplishing within the school itself. The teachers are very understanding, and even if you're not the smartest kid, if you're putting forth that effort, they're going to help you. They're going to notice that effort that you're putting forth. 
and they're going to help you learn and get better. That's the thing to feel proud about, that we can get the right educators here to help our children become well educated. Also, in the school, Mr. Bernard will know everyone's name, or all the teachers will know everyone's name, because we're such a small school. And then that helps that, like, if you go to extra help, your teacher actually knows who you are, and they're helping you. You know, as a school, we've been recognized statewide uh, many, many times for our academic excellence and the programs that we have. And so from that standpoint, you know, I've always been proud of the fact that we have a good reputation educationally, not only locally, but statewide. The fact that in the last two years, Boston Magazine has ranked the school in its top 50 schools um, in the, um, in the eastern, eastern part of Massachusetts. I am most proud of uh, the kind of people that come out of the school. I'm actually most proud of what I got here as an education because I'm like I went to college and I didn't feel overwhelmed at all. I felt like this high school really prepared me. So my my involvement has been longstanding. It's been uh, it's coming to a close of eight years now as a member of the secondary school building committee. But there's still a lot of work to be done, and I'm looking forward to uh, to continuing the work to. Uh, to get the middle school, high school ready for, uh, for their openings. When you look at it, right, this is not to scale at all. That building that you see, which is enormous from here, is small compared to the entire facility. Um, I'm excited to see what, what the new building is going to be like and how cool it will be. And um, excited to have Wi-Fi all over the school. I'm excited about the prospects of what these students, these teachers and these administrators could possibly do and the potential that they have when you put them in the right setting and with the right resources and the right technology. I just think that there's endless opportunities for them and I'm excited for them to do more hands-on and projects and robotics and whatever it is that they determine that they can do. The, and the final facility will be wonderful. Uh, it's going to be uh, a real plus for the town. Real plus. And I love this place. And um, uh, it's great to go with such good memories. Outside of just thanking everyone on the, everything that they put into the project, just whether it's just, you know, even going out to vote or, you know, proving it, anything of that nature, I think it's a wonderful thing. It's going to be a beautiful school. and. I'm very excited to see it come to fruition. I'd like to say that I think the new school um, would be great for our community um, in so many different aspects, but um, I'll definitely miss the old high school. Well, as, you know, I guess I'll just say uh, in closing is that, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about the new school and moving to the new school, I know. Um, the guidance area is going to be a lot bigger and more modern and that's going to help us you know carry out our programming um, but I think I'll always you know having been here my first years in North Rain High School I'll always remember the school and I, I'm having a hard time picturing this area without the school and I'm having a hard time picturing like not working in this building but I'm sure I'll get used to it with a, a little bigger of an office <laughs> um, so yeah I think that's that's kind of what I'll what I'll remember and uh, you know, but definitely looking forward to moving forward. I'm glad that the, the community actually rallied around it twice this year to support the project and it is more than exciting to see the steel being, you know, erected on the top of the hill and I think it's going to be a project that we can all be very proud of. You know, I'm excited about this new building, this new place that we're going to work and I'm excited for some of the new things that will be there but I, I really We'll have some fond memories of NRHS, the first. I don't think the, um, the support of the community to fund the project and to, uh, and to see it through uh, can be overstated. Um, it's a significant project for a community uh, of any size, but particularly one uh, that's not awfully large and does not enjoy uh, some of the um, benefits of a commercial tax base like a lot of other communities do. I think it says an awful lot about, um, about the pride that North Reading has um, in itself as a community and also um, in uh, what it hopes for its, uh, for its young people um, and, and certainly speaks to uh, a 
education as being a, a significantly high priority. And uh, that's something that, um, that I'm hoping that the entire community uh, right now feels very good about and continues to feel good about um, as, as things progress over the next couple of years and into the future. I have any closing statements. It'll be that uh, there was a school before yours, people who are viewing this for posterity, and it was very different from the one you have now, but it wasn't so different in the people that went to it and the people that taught there. And, uh, you know, that part of it will never change, and that's the most important part. So enjoy your new facilities and enjoy the people in it because this will be an exciting time of your life.